In about the year 500 BCE, just as the Athenian state had become a democracy, a new institution was also established. That institution was called ostracism, and was a method where each year the Athenian people could put into exile one person for 10 years if enough people voted to exile him. If 6,000 votes were cast, the person who received the most votes would be banished from the city on pain of death if he returned before the 10 years had elapsed. His property would not be touched, however, and after the 10 years were over, he could return to the city without any disgrace. Through the centuries, ostracism has puzzled and been condemned by historians and statesmen. John Adams, the second president of the United States, even went as far as saying that ostracism showed that the people of Athens were unfit for managing the executive branch of government. I will here talk about the reason why ostracism was established and what function it served in Athens. I will argue that ostracism was actually a quite moderate institution and served both as a symbol for the fact that power was in the hands of the people and as an ideological justification for democracy. Furthermore, it was a political tool that could limit the destructiveness of conflict between the elites of Athens, something which had been a chaotic force in the political life of many Greek city-states the last few hundred years. Ostracism derives its name from ostracon, which means a fragment of pottery. On these fragments, which were basically just lying around and pretty much worthless, the citizens would write the name of the person they wished to be exiled. Each year, the male citizens of Athens would first decide whether or not to hold an ostracism. If it was decided to hold one, a month or two would pass, and then the people could vote on anyone they wanted. It was not like a standard trial where someone would be accused and could defend himself. If he got enough votes, he would simply be guilty and would need to leave the city. In total, we know at least 10 people who were exiled in the 5th century before Common Era. The first man to be ostracized was a guy called Hipparchus in 487, a relative of a former tyrant in Athens before the democracy was established. The last ostracism happened in 417, where another unlucky guy called Hyperbolus was banished. The specific circumstances of why a certain guy was ostracized is not clear, but it seems that it was used mainly when conflict between rival elite leaders was intense. This was then a method where the citizens could intervene in a potential destructive conflict and could intervene in the issue the elites were fighting over by banishing the leader of one side. To understand ostracism, it is crucial to understand what happened in conflicts between elite rivals before the establishment of democracy and ostracism in Athens. We will only be looking at Athens, but this was also a problem in many Greek city-states. From 750 to 500 BCE, the period called the Archaic Period, power in Athens was in the hands of the elites. These elites would fight among themselves, often banishing the losing faction to mass exile. This was a destabilizing chaotic force, however, since the banished persons would sometimes return to Athens with foreign help, trying to regain control of the city. The institution of ostracism tried to limit this destabilizing force of mass exile by replacing it with the exile of a single individual who could be banished if he was seen as a threat to the city. The citizens could therefore intervene in the conflicts of the elites and by banishing the leader of one side could then apparently calm the situation. By only banishing one person and by not molesting his property or status as a citizen and allowing him to return after 10 years, it was much less likely that he would return with foreign assistance to wage war upon Athens. It seems that not everyone voting in an ostracism had the best of attentions, however. An anecdote about a politician called Aristides the Just illustrates this. In his ostracism in 482, an illiterate farmer who did not recognize Aristides gave him a piece of pottery and asked him to inscribe it with the name Aristides. Puzzled, Aristides asked the farmer if this man Aristides had wronged him, whereupon the farmer said, No, I don't even know the man, but I'm tired of hearing him being called the just. Aristides then silently wrote his name on the shard and gave it to the farmer. This story might have been fabricated, however, to show Aristides' virtue. Ostracism also had a symbolic function. Each year, when the citizens had to decide whether or not to hold an ostracism, served as a reminder to the elite 
that the power of banishment was in the hands of the people. This can be seen as a sort of reenactment of the overthrow of elite power in 508, when democracy was established. In 508, the Athenian people supported one elite group and expelled the other. It was thus that they gained the power of banishment and therefore political power. I mentioned at the start that ostracism was also an ideological justification for democracy. But how can an institution where you banish an individual without any trial for 10 years from the city reflect positively on democracy? The answer to this is that it can be seen as limited and lawful compared to oligarchic city-states, that is rule of a few, where conflicts would be solved by mass exile. It could thus be seen as a reflecting positively on a just and moderate democratic system. So it seems that we must disagree with John Adams' condemnation of ostracism. It served a specific function in classical Athens in the 5th century BCE, and one can see it as a lesser evil. The alternative, that of mass expulsion and instability, seems much worse. It was a way to control the elites fighting among themselves and other behavior that could lead to chaos and instability. Imagine ostracism in the 21st century. I'm sure someone in the financial sector would worry if the citizenry had the power to banish them for behavior that could threaten society. Maybe we need an ostracism 2016 online campaign, Kappa. If you want to know more about ostracism, you should check out the book Exile, Ostracism and Democracy by Sarah Forsdyke, published in 2005.